I think uh, the little frequency is easy to understand. Brute force is just trying all possible keys, shift by one, shift by two, shift by three, until you shift by 26. Actually, 20, uh, shift by 26 doesn't make sense because it maps A to A. So it is yes. not, yeah, it is not important. Uh, the important shift to one until 25. But doctor, I think this one will take too much time. If you are trying to shift one, two, three, four, it will take for us. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I will not uh, depend entirely on this uh, brute force analysis to uh, to 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 to, uh, to waste your time in the exam. Of course, this okay, is not doctor. this is not possible. I okay. will give you an exam if you understand if you understand the brute so brute force analysis. If you understand uh, the frequency analysis, you will solve it very quickly. I will make sure of this. Okay, doctor. The most important for you now is just to understand everything to and the, uh, train yourself or take a paper and write down the solution. And also, uh, I don't know if you uh, uh, somebody contact you about that. I, I contacted you through uh, Google Classroom and the exam. There is no there is no way to upload images, so the, uh, I will give uh, the exam, and I will make sure that you will not need to write anything on the paper. So it will be just like multiple choice and uh, by keyboard uh, writing, typing. Yeah, it's open questions, and maybe maybe I will add some uh, multiple multiple choice question. Okay. But you know, it is not allowed in. It is not allowed actually. It's allowed twenty percent, twenty percentage of the exam to be uh, multiple choice, but other analytical questions are all allowed. So you can say difficult questions are allowed, easy questions are not allowed. <laughs> okay, okay, doctor. Yes. No problem. So uh, this is all about uh, liter frequency analysis. I will not talk about. I will not talk about the software. You can open the video, and you step by step because it is not going to be asked in the, the quiz. So it is better if you can try it on, from the video online, and then if you have a problem, you can contact me. Okay, doctor. Do you know how to break this? Anybody? Okay, let us try, doctor. Okay. Wasif or Abbas, anybody can. Also, we have. Give us one minute, doctor. We have Aboud Rashid also with us. Maybe he can okay. try. Uh, doctor, I think that is. Uh... We have too much V, so I think V is E, maybe. V is E? No, 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 no. Because uh, we have no. to see that uh, table. Uh, actually, oh, okay, that's a good point. Maybe, maybe you will have a repeated uh, letter is not correct to be E because the, the encrypted text is very short. So mm -hmm. the, the, the calculations it may be not correct. To make it more correct, you have to get very long, very long encrypted, uh, encrypted text. <laughs> okay, doctor, let us try to... This is just English, and if you are, if you are familiar with English, maybe... Doctor, K, or K is equal to three. I mean, it's shifted by three. How did you know? Uh, actually, uh, this uh, the words with two uh, alphabets like L, V, and W, R. So I was just matching it with if and in like that. So uh, I found that L is equal to I. Yes. Okay. And that... V is equal to S. So exactly. it is like shifted by three. Yes, exactly. Oh. You get okay, it. Okay, you get okay. it. Yes. So this is the. Is something I don't remember the exact sentence, but it is something. This cipher is easy. It, no, no, is maybe too easy to, too easy to. 
uh, to okay. encrypt or something. I don't so remember. W is T and R is uh, O. Yeah, W W is T and R is O. This is two and this is two. And this is this, this, T H I S. Okay. If you get this the, the, the key, which is for example, V is shifted to S, so shift is three, so you can go and implement your uh, key using the alphabet, and then you can you can find the plain text. Okay, so block ciphers. <clears throat> For block ciphers, the main the main uh, objective of using block ciphers here in this type is just to avoid to avoid the letter frequency analysis. For example, I want to make permutation for the key for the for the letters. I want to make only permutation means means I change the position of the letter, the location of the letter, not the content of the letter. Just the location. So, for example, if I change, so if I change the location of the letters of this uh, of this sentence, for example, this sentence, pirate attack. If I change the letters order, I get something like that. The frequency analysis will not work. Why? Because the same frequency here is the same frequency here. Why is that? Because we only changed the order of the letters. We don't. We didn't change the content of the letter. We didn't substitute. We just permute. We just change the location of the letters. But here, the concept also is applying block ciphers, which is applying block by block. So here, the block size is four. So we divide the uh, we divide the, uh, the the letters here to four letters blocks, and then make or apply a function to the these letters. For example, this function is alpha one equal three or sigma one equal three, sigma two equal one, sigma three equal four. Sigma four equal two. This means I move the letter at location one to the location three. I move the letter at location one to location three. Where is it? Okay, this is not this is not the cipher here. So P is changed to the location three, which is here. Okay. I think it's better to open camera because I will waste too much time to point. Okay, here, for example, I will give you example, the same example in the paper. Okay. Uh, doctor, before you start, so uh, you mean that block cipher is like another type of cipher, like it's like Caesar cipher, but another way, right? Yeah, yeah. Block ciphers, uh, block ciphers is not is not a, a specific cipher. Is a bigger uh, uh, type of ciphers, uh, broad type. It contains many other uh, cipher types. So uh, the block okay. ciphers, this one, you can say we have the we take only substitution cipher, substitution cipher. Okay, this substitution cipher is is not actually substituting and taking another con uh, content. It's just to substitute the location, change the location. For example, change the location of one, two, three, and location of two to one. For example, here, block ciphers, we have substitution ciphers that we are going to study here. We have uh, uh, this that we studied at uh, lecture five. We will also study AES. These are all block ciphers. Here, we take very simple substitution cipher, and we started even in lecture five, 
by some institutions, cipher, but with, with the, the bigger one, with bigger version of it. So, for example, here you can make the same thing that we did in chapter five. We say that this is alpha, this is old location, and this is the new location or the new value. This is one, you can say this is binary one, and binary one is moved to binary three, so it is zero, one, one. Binary two is moved to binary one. The same table that you saw in lecture five. But here we do it, actually we do it like alpha of two equal one, the same thing. So the same effect, alpha of three equal four and alpha of four equal two. Now, if I take an example, pirate, attack, okay, pirate attack. I, uh, and also I know that in which is block size equal five, four, block size equal four. So the solution is started like that. First divide into blocks, divide the input text into blocks of four letters. So I take this one, this is pi R A, this is the first block, and this is T E A T, the second block, and T A C K, the third block. So if the number of letters is not divisible by four, you can add, for example, dump letters like X, X, X. You can add anything, A, 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 or whatever. But this must be added to the algorithm too, because this is going to be added to the key here. Block size is a key. So you have to, this is the first part of the key. This is the second part of the key. And also the dump letter should be added too. Now I divided the, the data to blocks. Now I apply this function. Alpha of one goes to three. This means this one at location one goes to location three. And alpha of two goes to location one. So this is as two is coming here and alpha of four is going to, to two, four going to two and three going to four, three going to four. This is the first uh, block. The second one is one is going to three, one is going to three, two is going to one and three is going to four, no, this is three is going to four, this is A, sorry. And four is going to two. And here also, one is going to three, two is going to one, three is going to four, and four is going to two. So this is the encrypted text. So you can send it to the receiver and apply the key here. The key is n equal four and alpha of kaza equal so and so. This one alpha of one equal three. Doctor, can I see the paper? Like that. This is the key and you have to send this key to the receiver. The key, the key contains these information which is n equal four sigma of one equal equal uh, one equal three and sigma of two equal one and sigma of three equal four and sigma of four equal two and also the dump letters which is x letter this is the dump letter all this information you send it as a key to the receiver so if he knows this key, he can decrypt the data back. Okay, you understand this part? Doctor, can you show the dump letters? For example, the word pirate, if we divide in four, four blocks, block size four. So it will be like P-I-R-A is one block and then second block T-E and then X-X. Yes. Okay. That, okay that's fine. it, you just add it to make it uh, the block of four. You just answered the, the question. 
for example, if I divide by three here, or no, no by three, it, because it's divisible by three, you can say five. Here we have four multiplied by three is 12. 12 is not divisible by five. So if the block size is five, this is going to be uh, P I R A T. This is the first one. The second one is E A T T. This is four and A. And the third one is C K X X X. Just like that. Okay. Yes, that's fine, doctor. Thank yeah. you. So now uh, we move to the, the, uh, the other parts because the other parts are uh, this lecture. Actually, if you understand this lecture, you will not have a problem in the remaining course. The entire course, you will not have a, a, a problem in the entire course because I introduced the entire course in very quick, uh, in a very short, quick or fast uh, letter, uh, fa fast slides very short and very concise slides by introducing very simple concepts. If you understand these simple concepts, for example, brute force attack, for example, uh, letter frequency analysis, Caesar cipher shift key, you know what is key, symmetric key, you have to send the symmetric key to the, send to the receiver and so on. This one, if you understand the main concept is in this lecture, exactly le lecture two, not lecture three and not lecture four. Lecture two, because this is zoom out or zoom in version of the entire course. This is very small or um, a very small, very small scale image of the entire image. Okay. Yes. Sir. So stream ciphers here. We we also study study stream ciphers in subsequent chapters. Stream ciphers is talking about a stream of bits. And this is stream of bits coming like uh, from the network, from network, from cable, and coming to the computer. So it should be, when it goes, in, when it goes out from the computer, it should be encrypted before sending it to the receiver. It goes out to the receiver, the recipient bit by bit or byte by byte. So you have to apply your algorithm, the stream cipher, byte by byte or bit by bit. This is the stream cipher. It's just like a stream of water coming from the internet or going out to the internet or the network. The most basic one here is the XOR stream cipher. The XOR stream cipher is the magic here because if you apply XOR between random key SI and the plain text, you will get YI, which is secure. When you apply the same functionality, which, which is XOR, you will extract the plain text back. And this is the magic of XOR. You apply it here, you apply it there, the same functionality, different, different output in each stage. The first one, we get a secure data. The second one, we get the plain text back. Let's get an example here this one if you understand the logic of xor this is going to be easy for you zero x or zero is equal zero one x or one is equal zero one x or zero is equal one zero is x or one is equal one this means if they are different the result will be one if they are the same the result will be zero same bits different bits here we have the encryption here, that, that functionality actually here, that, this circle. This circle here, we get a plain text, we get a secret key, random secret key. And then we apply XOR. 0, 1 equal 1 because we, they are different, similar, different, similar, different, different, similar. So this is the cipher text. If you get this cipher text and apply and apply the same secret key, you will get one and one equals zero, one x or one equals zero, zero x or one equal one, and so on until you get zero x or one is equal one. If you compare this with the original text, you will find that this is a match. 
This means if you apply XOR twice, you will get the same data back. Okay, this is the stream cycle. You understand it? Yes, doctor. So uh, mainly if you understand uh, XOR, uh, because you know XOR is like uh, the wild card of our work here. You, you will use it in many, in any, in any encryption, any type of encryption, you will use it along the course, XOR. Logic of, of XOR, even at the primary, uh, or the not the primary, the first years of any college, uh, they study uh, logic design or something like that uh, subject is called about logic design, is talking about logic design or uh, sim or uh, uh, lean, uh, not Boolean, Boolean algebra. So in this, you study how to use everything using binary and they study XOR. And XOR, when they study it, they don't know that XOR is going to be along with them on uh, the four, with, with them the four years. Even I apply it in security. For example, if I apply a restriction on the assignment of uh, of permissions. For example, I can enforce XOR means if a user in a group, he will not be used in another group. He will not be belongs to another group. Either he is in group A or group B, not together, not the same. He cannot be in both places at the same time. This is an XOR logic. So this XOR is not just for, uh, uh, for use in logic. It is you can use it to design algorithm. You can use it to design an approach in security to make constraints like that. Okay, and here we talk about XOR. XOR is not used actually uh, as uh, uh, in commercial use, just to explain, but it is used inside all of these algorithms. For example, advanced encryption standard. This is commercial one that is used actually, and data encryption standard, and EDIA, and Blowfish, RC4, RC5, RC6, and the RC6 here, the, uh, the RC4 here specifically is just for the stream cipher. The others are block ciphers. AES. Okay, yes. I have uh, like a question about what is the difference between stream and block? Actually stream, stream is, we can say, uh, for example, okay, let, let's, let's, talk, let's take an example. You want to encrypt a file on your computer. You use block cipher. But you want to encrypt a file moving from one computer to another you use stream cipher, okay? This is very simple. Uh, okay. Any... Actually, actually, it's not about bit by bit. It's just to make sure that is very fast encryption because the data is in motion, not at rest. Okay? And, Doctor, you mean... Allah, I've heard Sorry, Doctor. Okay, I mean... Yes, no problem. I mean, if you apply, for example, you are applying uh, uh, encryption to your uh, data, for example, database. You are applying okay. for, for a database, yes. You are applying block encryption because the data is, is, is stayed on there, is stayed there. You can apply uh, the block at any size. You can take any size. For example, you can take, for example, one k by one k bytes of size, and you apply the same algorithm on it. You can take, for example, ten bytes, one k, no problem. But for okay. stream cipher, if you if this database has a transaction online, and you want to uh -huh. have this transaction secure, so you can use a stream cipher. So, doctor, we use the block ciphers for the like the stable data, and for yes. the moving data, we use the stream, stream cipher. cipher. Yes, actually, if you uh, if I if you see now, 
this one, this RC4, this RC4 is used in cell phones. It was used okay. in cell, cell phones, you know, it's the communication, the wireless communication. So yes. it, it is used in fast encryption uh, applications. If you want to use fast encryption and the data is, mo is moving around the network, so you can use stream cipher. Okay, and yes, this is, okay. I think here. Now we move to the last part here in this lecture, which is RSA. RSA is an algorithm. This is type of asymmetric algorithm. This is an asymmetric. Asymmetric means we don't send keys. Nobody send keys. We send pub public data and through this public data, we can get the private keys. Uh, it is named after the three inventors of this algorithm, Revisit, uh, Adel, uh, Shamir, and Adelman. And this, the R is re uh, referring to Revisit, and S is, refer is referring to Shamir, and A is referring to Adelman. MIT guys, yes. So RSA algorithm. Okay, let's talk about RSA here with an example. I want to have, uh, uh, I want you, okay, I just uh, get some paper. I don't have too much paper here, but it's okay. I will open the camera here. Okay, can you see, can you see the camera now? Okay, now it's okay. Let's, let's take an example immediately. I want to send data between two parties. This is, the first one is Bob. And this is Alice. Bob has something the jewelry, he want to send it to, this is something like good, gold, okay? He want to send this gold to Alice, okay? Now, we are going to the Alice's side. I go to Alice's side. So we, ha we are here at Alice's side. Don't forget about this, okay? Alice, pick two prime numbers. And for simplicity, she's going to pick the most basic numbers here, three and 11. Now she starts to make, to try to send something to Bob as public key. So if somebody take this public key, he will not be able to encrypt the data or decrypt the data. So he, she is preparing a public key and private key. This is the first step at Alice's side. So it takes the three and 11 and then calculate N, N is equal P multiplied by Q. This is just an algorithm. So don't, me, don't tell me why, it is just an algorithm. P multiplied by Q is three multiplied by 11, which is 33. This is the first step. This is the second step. The third step is to use totient, totient number. Totient number is how many numbers, uh, the, uh, they call it primitive roots of a number. Uh, uh, primitive roots, you will find it in number theory, uh, lecture, next lecture. So 5n, simply if a prime, uh, a prime number, it has, it has p minus one, primitive roots. So seven has six primitive roots. 11 has 10 primitive roots and so on. Okay, keep it like that for now. So if P here, we have three, we have three has two primitive roots and the Q has 10 primitive roots. 
Now we have 20, 5n is 20. Okay, so 20 here. And we choose a prime number E. I choose a prime number E. So that E is co-prime with 5n. Co-prime means the greatest common divisor of these two numbers equal one. This is what I mean by co-prime. Okay, let me open. This is what I mean by co-prime. Co-prime. I select E uh, uh, to be co-prime was 5N. Okay. And here we can, we can say E should be co-prime with 20, which is 5N. What is the numbers that co-prime with 20? We can start by, for, for example, I start from one, two, three. What about three? It's not good because it is already selected as a prime number. We cannot select it. What is about four? Four is not co-prime because it is only, must. it should be prime number. It is not prime number because this is divisible by two and also this is divisible by two. So four is not working. Five, what about five? Five is not working. Why? It is not co-prime with 20 because this is divisible by five and this is divisible by five. So this is not working. What about six? Six is not going to work because 20 is divisible by two, six is divisible by two. What about seven? What about seven? Seven is okay. Yes, seven is okay. Yes, yes, yes. Seven is okay. So we pick E as seven. So greatest to common divisor of seven and 20 is one. They don't have common divisor. They, have, they, they, they don't have common divisor. So the, the common divisor is one. So seven is okay. Now I have E equals seven. Now I want to create the, I have E equals seven. I can send the public key, that public key, which is E and N, which is E is seven and N is uh, uh, 33. I go up. And send Alice send this public key to Bob. She is going to send E, which is seven, and N, which is thirty-three. She is going to send it to Bob. Now I still here. I am still here with Alice. I am still with Alice. So Alice here, she is trying to create because she is going to create private key. Before sending this data to Bob, she is going to create a public key, a uh, private key, sorry, for herself, private key. How to create a private key? She is going to select, to uh, select something like that, E multiplied by D is congruence with one mod, mod 20, mod 5N, 5N is 20. So I will write 20. 20 is 5N, 5N. And here E is seven. So seven multiplied by D is congruence with one mod 20. Can we solve this one? We can solve it. We can solve it only if we have, what is the number multiplied by seven will give us a remainder of one mod 20. Do you know? Anybody knows? Uh, what is the number that if we multiply it by seven is give us a remainder of one mod 20. This is only one number. Three. Yeah, exactly. This is three. If we multiply seven by three, this is going to give us 21, 21, 21. The 21 
if we mod it with 20, it's going to give us a remainder of one. And this is the remainder. So seven multiplied by three, this is going to give us one mod 20. Now Alice has her private key. Private key here is three and three, three, 33. And she sent a public key. This is different key. She sent it to Bob. Okay. Now at Bob's side, now at Bob's side, we have here public and private key. At Bob's side, Bob will do what? We'll do encryption. Encryption is done like that. He's going to use this relationship. He's going to say C, which is the encrypted text equal to the M. M is the text that he want to encrypt. This is the plain text. To the power seven mod 33. So he calculates C and then send it back to Alice. Alice will calculate M, which is the plain text equal to C to the power private keys three mod 33. Okay, now you get the RSA. RSA is finished now. Now Alice can uh, Bob can send the, the, the secure data, which is M. He's going to secure it. So he's going to encrypt it and get an encrypted version of it and then send this encrypted version and Alice can decrypt it using her private key, which is three. Okay. You understand the sequence? Yes, doctor. Okay, I think I, I think uh, you are tired for today, and also me. I I'm about to. Uh, I'm about to uh, to because I'm ex just explaining as it's a lecture. So I think it's uh, enough for today. Uh, and if you have anything else, you can uh, better if you look at the videos and then you have a specific questions, and then we can uh, discuss it. So you what time we can uh, discuss? Chapter, you can you go to chapter three and chapter four and study it first and then prepare some questions and then tell me to answer it. Okay. Okay. okay Where uh, doctor? Time, doctor, tomorrow. Or? Uh, I think uh, tomorrow is not possible. Maybe the uh, Wednesday. Tomorrow is okay. Tomorrow at the same time is okay for you? Uh, from six to eight? Yes. Okay, okay, doctor. Now we finished two chapters, right? Yes. Full two chapters. Yes, okay. two chapters are finished, no problem, yes. So we will okay. revise the, two, the other two chapters uh, tomorrow, inshallah. Inshallah, doctor. And the quiz will be next week, right? Yes, quiz will be next week. Okay, doctor, inshallah. So